YouTube fan community, Sparks fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins. We're here today to talk about Sparks' third album, Kimono My House, released on May 1st, 1974. Their first for Island Records, and one of my absolute favorites by this band. I mean, for a lot of people, it's one of their favorite albums by Sparks, because they have so much to choose from. But this was definitely the album that blew them up. I mean, they had put out a couple albums in America, not really making a dent in the music scene, but somehow got attracted... England sort of picked up on them. Uh, Island brought them over and said, hey, we know you've got guys playing with you already, but we kind of want to market you as an English group, so get three English guys to play with you, and uh, we'll help you put out your record. So that's exactly what they did. This album did extremely well for itself in England, peaking at number four in the charts, which is unbelievable. Um, in, in America, not so much at number 101, but I feel like in America... This band has always been like the best kept secret. I feel like they've been popular everywhere else. And they're popular in America, but I feel like if you ask people who Sparks are, they still don't really know who they are. Um, in England, the first track off this thing, this tiny big enough for the both of us, was a massive number two hit. Definitely propelled them into the different stratosphere of popularity, uh, led by a really well received appearance on top of the pops, which apparently almost didn't happen. Funny enough, when they met the guys who were running the show, um, they came over to introduce themselves, and the, the male brothers responded with their American accents, and the guys who ran the show weren't too keen about that. So I guess they didn't play one night, but obviously they came back for a different night. And from what I've read, it was one of those things where you went to school the next day and said, hey, did you see these weird guys on TV last night? They were freaking amazing. But um, I adore this album. It's just, it's fun, it's quirky, it's weird. Sparks are their own genre. They sound like nobody else. No one will ever sound like them. They make it sound so effortless. It sounds so... They don't purposely try to sound weird. Their music just comes across as otherworldly and different. But it rocks at the same time, depending on what album you're listening to. I mean, this one in particular has a lot of rocking moments, but... Let's just jump right in. So the, the first song on here, this time ain't big enough for the both of us. I mean, it's dramatic. It's fun. It's tense. It's totally out there. The song vocally is a workout. The guitar leads are so catchy. Um, that lightly tapped electric piano adds such a groove to the background. This song is just articulate and punchy. And it sounds like it's a part of a movie soundtrack. A lot of Spark songs have that sort of epic feel to it. Um, like it was made for the stage. Some uh, old school vaudevillian act. But it rocks hard. And it's just such a fascinating example of where pop music can go. You know, they never felt like they wanted to be you know, just a straight-up rock and roll band. They wanted to incorporate other sounds and still make something catchy and fun at the same time without it sounding too much like one thing or another. You get the you get the elements of a lot of different genres of music crammed into one song sometimes, let alone album. And that makes it fun because you never know what you're going to get next. And the, the left turns that this album takes is unbelievable. Uh, up next is Amateur Hour, and um, it's, for, for me, the, the guitar on this one sounds like, sounds like The Prettiest Star by David Bowie. Um, it's a glam rock, clap along, good time kind of track. I love that descending melody. I'm a sucker for descending melodies. Um, totally the framework for what Franz Ferdinand would accomplish later on. They, I mean, I, I just heard, um, was I watching an interview with Alex Kapranos? And he was saying how Amateur Hour is one of the first songs they ever heard by Franz, or uh, by Sparks. And I get it, you know, that sort of framework that this song is constructed with sounds like something Franz Ferdinand would do much later on. It's a little zany, it's dizzying, but it's so much fun. And then you get the classic waltz song, Falling in Love With Myself Again, which is just a beautiful track. It's just so cool, you know. It's a one, two, three punch in this album, three in a row, absolute classics. Um, it's a song about cheering yourself on. Having been down for so long, you get to the point where you're like, you know what, I've got to, I got to cheer myself up because no one else is going to do it. Um, it's weird because parts of it almost sound evil or menacing, but then you get to the the verses and they're kind of like a nervous happy, and then you get to the chorus and it's just this joyous, you know, ebullient kind of feel. Um, it's a total sing along rocker in that chorus. It's one of those things where you hear it and you're like, how the hell do you write a song like this? I feel that way for a lot of the songs I hear by Sparks, but this one in particular is one of those, like, how the hell did you do that? Uh, up next, we've got Here in Heaven, and there's so many changes on this one. Russell's vocals on this are so cool. They can range from chill and confident to world-weary falsettos 
Um, the drums on this one crash along really well. The guitars are slightly beatly, which I like a lot. Um, fascinating words on this one. If you read along with the words, this one's a really... They have some great lines. They really do. They have some head-scratcher lines. And sometimes their lines are just so honestly blunt, but they're worded so poetically. It's like, damn, okay. They knew what they were doing. And the last track on side one, Thank God It's Not Christmas, a total guitar rocker, fairly straightforward, which is kind of a change for them, for their sound. Uh, splashy chorus, soaring reverb, heavy vocals. I love the guitar solo, that climbing melody. Um, man, crazy good song. Side two opens up with Asta Manana Monsieur, and um, you know what other group can use the word syntax, iron ore, and reference Emmanuel Kant in one song? Um, the humor in this group blows my mind, um, and this track just charges along with such a joy. It's it's a joy to experience this track. This was a co-write between Ron and Russell on this one. Um, the fade out on it rules. It's just a really cool song. <laughs> Uh, Talent is an Asset follows that one up, and it's a really smooth bass line with those chimes, crashy cymbals. Russell's got a super cheery vocal on this thing. Um, his vocals on this one transcend the song to an almost movie quality, which again, I've said that a couple times for songs on this album, but it takes on this, like, movie soundtrack-esque feel. Um, for me, this song sounds like if the Kinks were trying to write a glam rock song. Uh, the chorus breaks are so cool. Just the vocals overall, just a lot of fun to experience. Um, complaints is after this one, and the piano is very upfront on this one, and it bops along well. It sounds like if Sparks was writing a 50s rock and roll song. You know, really good, almost Chuck Berry-esque rock and roll solos. The false endings are fun. Um, you know, you almost want to say, oh yeah, it's Sparks doing a 50s song, but then again, you're kind of like, it's just Sparks being Sparks. <laughs> Uh, In My Family follows that one. This band truly comes from another world. This song has excellent pacing and timing with really quirky chords and vocal delivery. Um, again, read the lyrics to this one. And the last song of the album, Equator, is probably the most fascinating song about heartbreak and breakup that I've ever heard. Um, this one explores the end of a relationship in such a blunt but sophisticated, deep approach. The guys are on another level for sure. I mean, this is a song that... It's talking about the end of something, whether it's a relationship or a friendship or something. And the sort of, I almost want to say mundane is elevated to a level of drama, but is also aware of that. It's self-aware at the same time. These guys are on a different planet, man. Here's the back. I love the back cover. The guy's on it. It's so cool. Great shots. And the front cover is just one of the most classic album covers of all time. Here's the inner sleeve, which they, this is a reissue, by the way, from 2015, I believe. Uh, yeah, 2015 reissue. Nice picture of the guys, Ron and Russell. Lyrics to all the songs in the back. And they recreated the classic old school island label. So there you go, Sparks, come on to my house. Um, the title of the album is a slight reference to a Rosemary Clooney song called Come On In My House, or Come On In My House. Um, they also say it in the in Hasta Manana, Monsieur. But for me, this album is something that you will never get tired of listening to because you're always going to hear something different every time. There's so much layered busyness happening here, but everything is working for the same cause. Nothing here is extraneous. Everything is supposed to be here at the same time. These guys are geniuses. Simple as that. These guys are absolute brilliant geniuses. And I feel like if you're, if you're going to get into Sparks, they have such a varied and mass discography at this point. It could be very overwhelming. Start here. Um, this album is great. It, it's absolutely one of my favorite albums. Um, easily a 9 out of 10 for me. It's one of the best things they've ever done. It's one of my favorite, like, glam... I guess you can call it a glam album. For me, I think of glam, I think of T-Rex or Bowie or Martha Hoople at that time. Uh, or New York Dolls or something. So, like, I don't really loop them in with the glam thing. I know that's kind of what they kind of got lumped into for a little bit there. Um, for me, Sparks is just Sparks. They are their own genre. And I feel like if you grew up in the 70s, or if you grew up at any point in time, and the first music you ever heard was Sparks... I feel like everything else that you heard after that, every other band or song ever, would be kind of like, all right, it's good, but 
it's not Sparks. <laughs> These guys are on a whole different wave. Um, so yeah, that's it. 9 out of 10 for Kimono My House by Sparks. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this record and anything else by them. I'm going to review more Sparks records going forward. Um, but I thought I'd start with this one because it's one of my favorites and it's just one of the best ones to get into. If, if you're new to Sparks, pick this one up. You're not going to be dis disappointed by it. So there you go. My name is Giggins. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Sparks Kimono My House. 9 out of 10. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. See you guys.